club that could already be coming back today. Uh, we had a celebration of life for Kevin Jordan, uh, who passed away a couple of weeks ago, and his uh, all his trucker buddies are here. We had an opportunity to give the gospel to them. Great time, just a great time. So, uh, everybody awake this morning? Good. Let's get started with number six. How about that? Won't y'all stand? Let's sing. I want to know more about my Lord. Okay, that's what you're here for. Okay. You don't want to know more about it. Be seated as the choir sings.
of my favorites. Page 308, you can keep your seat. Page 308 talks about that lifeboat coming. It's coming to get us. One day we're going to get out of here, okay? We're floating down the stream of time we have not long to wait. The stormy clouds of darkness will turn to brighter day. Then let us all take courage for we're not left alone. That's right. The lifeboat soon is gone. Make your way back to your seat. Page 308, that last stanza, please. Oh, now's the time to get on board while she is passing 
Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and to be in your presence, just to know that you're here with us. If you weren't, we wouldn't need to even be here. Lord, I pray now for the offering we're about to receive. You bless it and bless also the, definitely the giver. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple of announcements for Brother George going to come and sing in just a moment, I believe. Uh, the announcements are this, uh, August the 12th at 6 o'clock, we have our ladies and men's Bible study over in the gym, and uh, the ladies get the fellowship hall where it's good and cool, so we're going to take Miss Sherry's classroom where it's good and cooler, and uh, we're going to come up here at 6 o'clock, okay? Men, remember that. It's going to be a brown bag, brown bag, uh, October uh, the 4th, well, let me do this first. I'll just remember something. Uh, this coming Sunday, uh, no, this coming Saturday, excuse me, and Sunday too, but coming Saturday, we have our youth rally out at the pavilion. Uh, that'll be uh, starting at noon and go to about 2.30. Uh, if you want to come out, you're welcome to do so. It's, uh, we've got about 70 uh, teens coming, uh, several churches around, all the way from, I think, Tallahoma, Manchester, Smyrna, so on and so forth, Chevville. Uh, Murfreesboro, of course. So, welcome to come noon. It'd be, uh, I think it's, uh, we're not sure yet what they're serving. Uh, maybe barbecue. We'll see what we're going to have, okay? Then the day, the very next day, the 11th, Brother uh, Brandon will be back here. Brother Brandon Redden, who is, uh, we're searching for a pastor. Uh, we have a pastor, and you will have a pastor till you get a pastor, okay? If that makes any sense to anybody else but me. But anyway, uh, he'll be back with his whole family. He's bringing his son-in-law who can pick a banjo, a mandolin, a guitar, almost anything with strings on it, he can pick it. And we're looking forward to the, meeting them, his daughter and uh, her son-in-law and their grandbaby. And also we're looking forward to meeting their son, uh, Andrew, who is an uh, autistic, autistic young man of 24 years old. Uh, but he's, uh, I heard yesterday where he was driving that would make me nervous, but <laughs> no, said he was driving. So again, he's, he's a high functioning uh, autistic young man. So again, y'all be here. Right after the service, we're gonna have a uh, feeding, we're gonna have meet and greet, so we're gonna have food available so nobody will miss lunch. We're gonna serve you something to eat right after that because we're gonna have a meet and greet with the Brandon family, okay? Uh, Brother Brandon's family, the Redden family, and, okay? So again, mark your calendar and be here. Try to be here, everyone be here. We will be receiving a vote on him on the 18th of August. 18th of August, we'll vote on Brother Brandon. Now, again, if you're not going to be able to be here, we're going to have an absentee vote. You can have an absentee ballot or a proxy. I'd rather you have it in writing, so we're going to pass out ballots so you can go ahead and vote uh, next week and just pass it over into the bucket, and we'll add it up at, uh, on the 18th. 
but we need your vote if you're not going to get to be here, okay? Now, back to the 29th of October through the 4th of October is our Jubilee. Uh, homecoming Jubilee starts. We've got a lineup of Steve Hart. Dr. Steve Hart will be here kicking it off uh, the morning of the 29th. His son, Jeremiah, will be here with his whole family to sing all week and uh, be here to preach on the 29th, two, uh, uh, Sunday night. Then Monday and Tuesday night, Dr. John Hamlin will be here. We'll have Les Butler here. Les Butler will be here and sing. And then Wednesday night, Kirk Copeland and the Hart family will be here to sing. Thursday night, uh, Randy Sutherland and the Hart family will be here to sing. And Friday night, Joe Arthur will be here, and nobody's going to want to sing then. And uh, <laughs> not to him. Brother Randy uh, may bring his daughter up, and she may sing. Okay, so that's the lineup for that. Now, again, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Sunday next Sunday's feeding, if you're going to be here, highlight. We've got a highlighter out there. Highlight your name on the sheet. Your name should be on the sheet. Almost everybody uh, that's a member of the church, their name's on that sheet out there. So you just highlight it. We know how many are coming. That way we'll know how many to, we're going to be feeding. So be sure you, before you leave, you highlight your name on that sheet out there if you're coming. If your name's not there, write it in somewhere and highlight it, okay? Again, the church retreat is coming up. I've already received some money for our retreat. So if you will help me and start, uh, we'll start collecting that money for the retreat. It's $332 for four nights, $332 for four nights, sitting in uh, on the very back side of the Great Smoky Mountains on a rocking chair looking at the Great Smoky Mountain colors then. The third week of October is a great time to go. You can go for $382, real simple way, real easy to get there. Not a problem at all. If you, if you just follow the big main road, you'll be there. So again, uh, if you have signed up, uh, we need your money. I've already made the deposit. I put the deposit down over a month ago. So we're ready to go. We've got about 19 signed up to go. Uh, again, we'd love to have more. We've got 32 rooms in the end there. So if you want to go, you're welcome to go. If you think about it, if you've got a room that you can share with someone, it would be 40, uh, 41 50 a person. Okay? So that would be a break. And we're going to have, uh, we'll go out to eat some, but I'll fix breakfast one morning for everyone. We'll have snacks, food, games, all kinds of stuff up there. They've got a huge, big rec room. Got a great big dining room. We've got a great commercial kitchen there. Uh, great time. We're all in there and have a wonderful time. So if you want to sign up, if you haven't, go ahead and do so. you still got time. All right. That's all I've got in the way of announcements. Brother George, you come on up here. Come on up and sing. And turn to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 2. I lost my wife May the 19th of this year, and it's been hard. <clears throat> I stood by the bed a dying dear old friend we talked about what Jesus said how someday we'd live again he held his Bible to his chest as he slowly slipped away but before he took his final breath I heard my daddy say it's true I can hear the angels singing It's true Heaven's bells are ringing I can see the face of my Jesus And he's coming for me It's true It's true I can hear the angels singing it's true. it's true the things of earth are fading I can see the face of my Jesus and he's coming for me it's true I know that there will come a day when death will fall for me 
and they'll put my body in the ground, but that's not where I'll be. So when I have those fears and doubts about what lies ahead, I just think about my dear old dad and the last two words he said. It's true. I can hear the angels singing. It's true. Heaven's bells are ringing. I can see the face of my Jesus. And he's coming for me. Oh, it's true. I see loved ones who are waiting. Oh, it's true. The things of this earth are fading. I'll be waiting on the other side for you. I'll be waiting. Dad, I sure miss you. <laughs> Can't wait to see you again. It's true. Well, it is true. Preached out of John. Preach yesterday out of John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. I told him, I said, well, it said, didn't say, let not your heart be broken, because their hearts were broken. It didn't say, let not your heart sorrow, because they were grieving. It didn't say, let not your heart mourn and cry, because Jesus showed us that in John eleven thirty five 35, when he said he wept, that Jesus wept. So we know that Jesus knows what we're going through. So we don't need to be troubled. Now, if we know where they are, I look around this room at folks. I preached my sister's funeral last year on my birthday. Three weeks later, I preached my daughter's funeral. So we know what it's like. A father stood here and eulogized his son. A brother stood here and eulogized his brother. And I thought I'd been in both those places. My spouse has never passed. Thank God for that. But we know what death's about, y'all. And as we look in Ephesians 2, we've been studying it now for several several weeks due to some interruptions. But it says in Ephesians 2, if you're with me there, in Ephesians 2 and verse number 1, it says, And ye hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past ye walked, look here, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all, let me read that again, among whom also we all had our conversation, that just conversation not communicating, it's your walk, it does communicate, but that's your walk, okay? Communication in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the Look here, fulfilling the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the lust of our, our, uh, our desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I've been preaching for several weeks now on why people need the gospel. One, they're dead. Secondly, they are deceived. The devil has them blinded. Last week we talked about they are depraved. And this week we're going to talk about and end up, hopefully, conclude this thing with they are doomed. They are doomed. Let us pray. Father, we seek you again this morning. Thanking you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. And, Lord, we understand when you tell us to not be troubled. There's a lot of things in life that will trouble us. There's a lot of things in our, our life that will 
will take us down quickly if we're not careful. But we should never be troubled because you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. Now, as we look at the conclusion of this many, many sermons, many messages on why people need the gospel, I ask you to help us today because those folks are doomed. In this sanctuary yesterday, there were a lot of folk here who are on this very, on this very path, I'm sure. Lord, we got them the gospel. We did all we could do. And Lord, I pray that, that as, the, as your word tells us, it, it won't come back void. I pray it's stuck. And I pray that they'll seek you. As you knock on their door, they'll seek you to come into their life and change their lives. You change mine. You're the same God today as you were yesterday, and you'll be the same God tomorrow. Thank you for that promise. We love you. Help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, they're, they're doomed. The, uh, the phrase, for by nature, reminds us of, of un, the unsaved or sinners by nature. And because, they, because they have their, their lives are, are, are sinful lives, by nature, their wicked deeds they do. They they are consumed. They're consumed by the the devil and by the wickedness of this world. They follow the world. We are all morally inclined to do evil. Anybody in this room? I don't care if you're saved. You you, you can still do any any a number of many wicked evil things. Humans are born in in a in a moral depravity. They're in that state. And it talks about that we just talked about it last week. In our in our natural state, we are we're drawn to evil. Our sin hey, our sinfulness means we are hey, destined uh, again to, to face God and his wrath and his judgment because of our sin. Isaiah fifty nine two says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face, hey, hey, his face from you, that he will not hear. When you're living in a sinful life, you, you, I, I used to get it all the time when I owned a restaurant. They'd come in, oh, Brother Steve, would you pray for my grandmama? I've been praying for her, and she's so sick. And I'm thinking, the lifestyle you're leading, your prayers aren't getting up to the ceiling. You aren't, getting out of, you aren't even getting out of the room. You, you need to get saved. You need to, you need to realize Grandmama probably is saved. <laughs> she, she's probably on her way to heaven if something happens to her. But where are you headed? There, there's, a, there's a pleasure in sin for a season. It says so in the Bible in Hebrews 11, 25, I think it is. But the day will come, the day will come when the pleasures, the pleasures will cease and, and, you'll, and you'll face the wrath of God, of a holy, uh, of a holy God. Most people live their, their lives and uh, rarely give God a second thought. Hey, 29 years, I didn't. For 29 years, I lived like I wanted to live, thinking I was pleasing, hey, pleasing myself. That's all that mattered. I was affecting other people's lives. Any, any time a person is in sin, they're affecting other people's lives. Uh, I, we've got people in our family, and you probably have too, that are impacting your life. I mean, I, I have homosexuals in my family. I'm sad to say, but they're kin to me. I, I have I have drunkards in my family. They're kin to me, and and they need the Lord. They need Him. People live. Hey, uh, people live for wealth and power and and position and pleasure. Never understanding their lives of pleasure again will end suddenly one day. One day they'll drop, and that'll be the end of it. When their day of judgment draws near, they'll they'll be hey there'll be no hey there'll be no reprieves then y'all, there'll be no second chances, there'll be there'll be only only meeting hey meeting with God and the wrath of a holy righteous and and probably offended God. This is why the Bible says it is a fearful thing, a fearful thing. Think of it, to fall into the hands of a living God. When you stand before God, when they stand before the Lord Jesus Christ one day, in that, in that 
that white throne judgment, their destiny is already set. Their destiny is already set. It's, it's a fearful thing. Because our God is a consuming fire over in Hebrews 12, 29. Wow. Can you think of that? You see those wildfires going on out in California? Just swirling and moving. Thousands and thousands of acres burn. That's the way God is. He's a consuming fire. See, this is the warning we need to hear today. In 2 Corinthians 6, hey, 6, hey, 6 2, it says, For he saith, I, I have heard thee in a time acceptable, and in a time, hey, of, sal- hey, of salvation. Day is the day, and day is the time of salvation. Said that yesterday. Today's the day. The very, very moment right now is the day of salvation. If you're lost today, if you've never trusted Christ for salvation, you're doomed because you're a sinner. There's only one way, and it, and it's in it's in uh, hey it's over in Matt, it's in John 14 verse six. He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me." There's only one way to escape the wrath of God, and the one way is through His Son Jesus Christ. Okay, Jesus is the only hope, only hope for the sinner. John 14 six again. He said, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. And here's what I told him. I said, be sure you get this down. Hey, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In that chapter, there's 67, me, I, my, myself. In that 31 verses, 67 times, it's all about me. Not me, but he. Okay? He's the me in that. What did that Philippian jailer ask those, hey, Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Didn't say join the church. Didn't say be a good person. Didn't say give money. But we like it. Didn't say do that. It said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I should be saved. Any other hope of salvation will fail you. Only Jesus can save the sinner from the judgments. Hey, the judgments that await you now. This is why Jesus said you must be born again over in John 3 7. Nicodemus that night. He told Nicodemus, you must, hey, a religious leader. That's the problem. A religious leader. Religion will take you straight to hell. But being born again, knowing Jesus as your Savior, knowing Him, hey, having the Holy Spirit in you will get you to heaven, okay? If you'd be free from all your sin, if you would if you'd miss hell and go to heaven, if you would be right with God, you must come to Jesus. He's the only way. He alone can save, and He alone is the only one that can save. Adam was warned. Uh, hey, sin would, would bring uh, terrible consequences into the world. Listen to Genesis 2 and verse 16, 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, uh, saying, of, uh, of, these, of every tree of the garden uh, there may us freely eat, but, uh, look here, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, and in the day that thou eatest, he already knew what you are going to probably do anyway, and he, hey, thou eatest, Therefore thou shalt surely die. Sin came, and death and death followed on its very heels. Romans 5, 12, Wherefore by, by one man, one man sin entered, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And, and, and so death passeth unto all men, all men, everyone, for that all are sin, sin, or have sinned. Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, look here now, but after this the judgment. See, since then, every person born into this world has died, with the exception of Enoch and Elijah. They're the only two. They were taken up. You all know. Enoch's walking with God one. And, and the God said, hey, you're, just a little close, you're closer to my house than yours, come on. And he was gone. Elijah went up in the whirlwind. 
He said, hey, I passed that man on over. Hey, what, what, what we sometimes forget is this. Death does not mean the end of life. You don't die like a dog. You don't, hey, you, know, you, you got somewhere else you're going to be headed once you die. Death implies separation. When a person dies, they are, they are separated from, from the, this physical world, but uh, they continue uh, to live in, on spiritually. There are only two places people go when, when life is over here. Their spirit leaves their bodies, and they, and they live on, on either in heaven or in hell. In heaven or in hell. Those who die with their with their faith in Jesus Christ go hey go to go to be in the presence of God. Second Corinthians I mentioned yesterday. Second Corinthians five eight. We're con- hey we're 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 confident. I said and willing and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When you check out of here, you're going to be with the Lord. But those who die, hey those who die in sin. He says, the wicked, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And, and, and look here, and all the nations that forget God. I think we're becoming a nation that's forgotten God. I think we're in serious trouble. I tell you what I foresee, I'm not a prophet and I'm not the son of one. But this election is going to be the most important election of our lives. I'm not going to get political. But we're going to hit, if we make the wrong choice, we're headed to World War III. We're headed to World War III. They were testing us, Brother George. They flew two planes, one Russian, one Russian, and one China, bombers, 200 miles of Alaska, within 200 miles of Alaska. We, we, sent, we sent some weapons their way just in case. And they turned around, but they're testing us. They're testing to see if we can stand or not. We're weak right now, y'all. We're totally weak right now. I've been in the military. I've never seen, I've never seen a military that's this weak in all my life. We're weak. It's, it's sad. So what you better do, you better, load up your, you better load up your safe with your weapons. Hello, live stream. Hello. Okay, it's going to get serious. There'll be a war right here in the United States before it's over. You've seen the pictures of, of, of the, hey, Russia and the Ukraine. Hello. Blowing down buildings. Wow. Be ready. Be ready. Now, don't you tell, don't you say nothing to me like, oh, that'll never happen. Because you said that when they took the, I took prayer out of, the, out of school. That's what you said then. I heard you. I was about 17, 18 years old. Couldn't vote. But I heard all, all the older folk talking. Oh, they'll never take prayer out of school. Oh, wake up. Wake up. I'm not being political. I'm just telling you. I'm, I, hey, I'm telling you what you better be ready for. Because we're asleep at the wheel right now. We're asleep at the wheel. Never seen nothing like this in my life. Whether you like it or not, we got the weakest administration you've ever seen in your life. Whether you like it or not, I don't care whether you're Democrat, Republican, or Independent. We have, I'm just calling it like it is. I'm your alarm clock. That's what the preacher is to be. He's to be the alarm clock that warns you in advance. Don't do that. Don't go there. Don't be this. So be real careful. Be real careful and listen. We're in trouble. Sherry asked me just, I guess, last week, do people, do people go straight to hell when they die? I answered her with this scripture right here, Luke 16, 22, 23. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried, hey, carried by the angels to, hey, in Abraham's bosom. The rich man, hey, the rich man also died and was buried. Now listen, and in hell, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, not torment, not one little single torment, 
he was in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Where did he wind up? In hell. He wound up in hell, and he was there, bam, as soon as they buried him. He probably there before they buried him. Because when I'm landing that casket down here, it's been a couple of days I done been gone. And I'm already in the presence of the Lord. Okay? So he probably was already there a few days before. I don't know how that burial went, but it went for several days, I'm sure. He's a rich man. Spent a lot of time with him. The saved leave this world. They leave this world of pain and, and heartache and sorrow and suffering and go to a place of peace. Beauty and rest. The lost leave the same world. I mentioned yesterday, Kevin Jordan had traveled all over this country, from coast to coast, driving a truck. He saw the sun come up. He saw the sun go down. He saw the beautiful mountains of, of, of the Smokies. He saw the beautiful mountains of the Rockies. He, he saw those dead bushes burning rolling around. I went through one a sandstorm out in New Mexico. He saw all that. But when he passed on that day and wound up in the in the hey in the presence of the Lord, he knew what he he knew a place a lot prettier than this one right here. He saw the beauty of those hey, those gates of pearls and those streets of gold and those jasper walls and all the other beauty that we can't even we can't even fathom in our mind. Our little finite mind won't, won't do it. The lost leave here. They leave this world behind and go to a place of unspeakable horror and suffering. The God's, hey, God's decree, all those who die in their sin, they'll face his wrath. That word wrath comes from the word that means to be red-faced. To be red-faced. This word pictures someone who has who's held their anger held their anger in check for a very, very, very long time. He's held in check for now over 2,000 years. And finally reaches the, end of his, reaches the end of his patience. Wow. God has been patient on humanity. He's been patient on us. He's long-suffering. I thank him for his long-suffering in my life. I should have died at 16, 17 years old. But God is merciful. He's given, he given mankind thousands of years to repent and to turn to him. Yet the world, the world stands in stubborn rebellion against God's command to repent. God has, has proven his love uh, by, by, hey, by everything uh, pretty much in our life. But by giving his son, but by giving his son, Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love toward us. And that while, hey, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's you dying for your enemy. You're an enemy to Christ. You, you, you were an enemy to Christ. He died for us. Man's turn, man is turning a deaf ear to the gospel. I watched it yesterday. They shut you off. Or whatever. They stubbornly refuse to come to Jesus. To get that forgiveness, to get that changed life, and to be saved. Sinners are, con hey, they're condemned already, John 3, 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. They're already destined. John, hey, John 3, 36, he that believes on the Son hath everlasting life. He believeth, hey, believeth not the Son, hath not life. But the wrath of God, the wrath of God abideth on him. Those who continue to refuse will eventually, eventually die in their sin and go to hell. The lost will face an all-consuming, all-consuming wrath of a holy, righteous, and all-powerful and offended God. Thessalonians 2, 2, 1, and 8, 9, listen to what it said, in flame and fire, in flame and fire, in flame and fire,
taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be, hey, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, at separation, y'all, and from the glory of his power. Wow. Wow. Revelations 20, 10 through 15. And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Can you imagine that? Tormented day and night forever and ever. Not a moment's rest, not a moment's peace in hell. It says, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face, from whose face the earth and the, and, the, and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were open and, and another book was open which is the book of life and the, day, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and the dead and the dead and, hell, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to his works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever shall not find, be found in the, uh, written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire wow the wages of sin y'all is death Romans 6 24 those do hey this does not mean, again, death is the end of all things. Uh, again, that word death in Roman, it, it just, it's, it's the second death. It refers, to, it refers to eternal separation from God into a place called hell. Separated from God. Can you imagine right now, you're sitting in the presence of God right now. Can you imagine being separated from God? The, the things that you have is a blessing. On, on, on pretty much on a daily basis, there will be a blessing in your life on a daily basis. Daily, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> a daily blessing every day, because of why? Because his mercies, his mercies are new every day. His mercies are new. He 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 loves you. You're his child, and he loves you. But just you're not going to be if you're saved. You're not going to be. But just imagine being separated. from not having God's blessing, not having God in your life. You're in a place of nothing, but there's no rest. It's a, it's torment constantly, torment constantly. Hell, this thing about the horror, the horrors of hell, unquenchable fire, unquenchable fire. You'll have memory, and you'll have remorse in hell. Y'all know some of this. That rich man, what did he want? He wanted, he wanted, he wanted Abraham to send Lazarus back. Send him back for, just to get to his brothers, his five brothers. He wanted him to touch his finger into the water and touch his tongue. Unquenchable thirst. Unquenchable thirst. Misery and pain, constantly. Frustration and anger, constantly. Eternal, there's scripture behind all this, y'all. I'm not giving it to you, but there's scripture behind every one of these. Eternal separation again. Undiluted wrath of God. In hell, the wrath of God will be given full vent. Wow. We hear all the time, oh, he's a loving God. Sherry read me something on Facebook the other day where this person rebuked her over her statement. But that ain't my God. My God's a loving God. Well, he is a loving God. But let me tell you what. He's a judging God, too. And he can throw the wrath out on you. You don't, want to, you don't want to be in his way. You don't want to be in his way. It's a fearful thing. It's a fearful thing. There'll be no mercy in hell, y'all. It is, it is only the mercy of, it's only the mercy of God which allows you to see the light of day. It's, the, it's only the mercy of God which allows you to enjoy the pleasures of this life. All the things that you take for granted, and we take them for granted so much, we take for granted. And one of the most important, I, Brother Jim's here, he's been through a lot of pain lately with that shoulder. And he can testify. 
Think. Think about this. Your health. Your health. My goodness. That's one of the most important things you can have. Because everything else falls apart when that falls apart. Your wealth. Your family. The breath of you taking your lungs. The food on your table. The shoes on your feet. The clothes on your back. The roof over your head. And every other thing that pertains to life daily. That's the mercy of God, y'all. That's the mercy of God. God has been good to you. But one day God... His goodness will end, and you will die. And if you die and you sin, you're going to go to hell. For there is no, there is no mercy, there is no joy, there is no grace, there is no happiness, there is no good. Hey, good things going on down there. Imagine an eternity, an eternity with where there is no rest, there is no beauty, there's no peace, there's no no laughter of a baby. She was watching. She showed me something last night on. Facebook, I don't do it, y'all know. But she showed me this little baby, and his whole face was covered in chocolate. <laughs> and Mama said something about, like, what are you doing? He said, I took a bath. <laughs> and she said, in what? He said, chocolate. <laughs> he took a bath in chocolate. Remind me of Wester E. <laughs> but hey, the laughter of a child, children playing, smiling faces. Kind words. There'll be none of that. There'll be no family. Oh, they may be there, but you won't know they're there. I've been in Snail Shell Cave where it's so dark you couldn't you couldn't see your hand. They was going there, a bunch of guys would just kind of search around, walk all the way back in there. We found that big old waterfall. Hey, hell's going to be like that. It's going to be so black and dark, all you're going to hear is screams. Mm. No friends, no hope, no hope, no hope of salvation then for sure. Imagine eternity with nothing before you but unending suffering, pain and sorrow. Separation again from God. Imagine that. Such is hell, y'all. And hell is where you're going to go if you do not, hey, if you do not save. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, the only way to miss hell is to come to Jesus by faith. B believe the gospel. Believe he lived here for 33 and a half years. He died on an old rugged cross. He died. He died for our sins. He died. He was buried in a tomb, of a rented tomb, a barred tomb because he wasn't going to be there very long. Three days, he's checking out. He rose from the dead. That's vitally important to our Christianity. He died, he rose from the dead, and guess where he's at right now? He's sitting at the right hand of God the Father interceding for you and I. The gospel's simple. All you got to do is accept it. If you don't know Jesus this morning, please accept it. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Please accept it if you don't know Jesus. No one is saved based on how, how, the, how good they are or how religious they are or how far they can jump uh, in God's direction. Salvation comes through God's grace only. Ephesians 2.8 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, that not of yourself, that not of yourself. It's a gift. It's a gift of God. Salvation comes when a lost Savior, a lost sinner, excuse me, turns to the Savior, turns to, to Jesus Christ by faith. Again, over in Acts 16, I think it's verse 31, where that, that Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house, and all that happened. He got saved, his house got saved. His whole family got saved. Praise God for that. Coming to God is, is something the lost sinner cannot and will not do, and God makes his first move. God could be knocking on your door right now. When God comes a-calling, 
Hey, the sinner needs to come to walk. Lazarus, when he came out of that tomb, let me tell you what, when he came out of that tomb, hey, he, did, he didn't hear him outside crying and grieving him, his friends outside that tomb. But when he, sur- when he heard Jesus say, Lazarus, come forth, he came out of there, and he said, loose him, loose him of those grave clothes, loose him, let him go. Not only was he delivered from death, he also was set free from the bondage of the grave. You'll be set free from you from your bondage. You're in bondage right now if you're a lost sinner. You're in, you're in bondage. Lazarus was raised to a new life. You can be too in Jesus Christ. But you must be born again. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? That's the whole purpose of this whole study of why people, why people need, need the gospel. They're dead. They're dead, they're deceived, they're depraved, and they're doomed. If you're one of those in this room right now, please, please come to Jesus. If you're saved, just say praise God and thank Him for it. Piano's playing, the invitation is open. You come now.